Cohen and that Cohen acted to fix the Daniels problem just days before the election. Also new reporting on a perennial question, are House Republicans working hand in glove with the White House to undermine the Russia probe? And later the new and apparently harder White House line on firing James Comey, the president didn't need a reason. We begin with what Giuliani said and what the rest of the White House and the president's legal team knew about it. CNN's Pamela Brown joins us with the latest. So it's safe to say, is the word blindsided a correct word to apply here for how the rest of the legal team is viewing this in the White House? Absolutely. Uh, blindsided, surprised, uh, caught flat-footed. I mean, that is uh, how they felt. Members of the president's legal team, not only White House officials, that's how they felt as they watched Rudy Giuliani make those comments on Fox News uh, last night. Anderson, this is according to multiple sources uh, speaking to our team. Um, and really, you know, I think members of the legal team and talking to sources who are close to them, uh, they were they were really taken aback because they had no idea uh, as they watched Giuliani, they feared that he was winging it, that he wasn't fully prepared when he appeared on Fox News. And even if he had devised a plan with the president, he had not consulted with other members of the legal team. Uh, and they believed that it only made matters worse for the president because, as you know, he veered off course from the president's previous comments involving the Stormy Daniels payment by Michael Cohen. Now, a source close to the legal team said it's as if the players are executing the plays on their own, referring to Trump and Giuliani. Another source I spoke with today, Anderson, called it a sideshow. And the concern here in the legal team is that this could be the new normal as Rudy Giuliani continues to talk to the media and do these types of interviews. Has Giuliani said anything else since last night on that front? He has. He told CNN uh, today that he had spoken with the president both before and after his appearance with Hannity. He said it was coordinated carefully. Uh, he said, you won't see daylight between me and the president, uh, pointing to Trump's tweets in support of what he had said. Uh, Giuliani, as you know, Anderson, was brought on board to the legal team to publicize Trump's message that he had not been treated fairly, that Hillary Clinton had received better treatment from investigators, and that former FBI Director James Comey should not be believed. Uh, he was also tasked with negotiating with the special counsel Robert Mueller's uh, team over an inter possible interview with the president. But Giuliani sort of upended the strategy last night, according to sources. His comments poured fuel on the Stormy Daniels case, which is a focus in the New York-based investigation of Cohen, not a case Giuliani is a part of, Anderson. Yeah. Pamela Brown, thanks very much. I want to bring yep. in the panel. Shelby Holiday, Jeff Tubin, Jim Schultz, Van Jones, Maria Cardona, and Scott Jennings. Jeff, just from a, a legal standpoint, you think the most significant thing that Giuliani said is about the the importance of the timing of Michael Cohen making this deal. He said it this morning, I believe it was on Fox and Friends, right. essentially saying that this did have a lot to do with the election, which is something Michael Cohen and his supporters all along have said this had nothing to do with the election. Right. And if you pay money to help Donald Trump get elected president, or if you reimburse someone who paid money to get Donald Trump elected president, those are campaign expenditures. And there are requirements for how much you can spend if you're an outsider or if you're the candidate yourself, whether, how and whether you report it. And if he did, and if the president didn't report it, and it was a campaign expenditure, that's a violation of the law. Now, I don't know if it's a criminal violation or civil. Most F -S -E -C F -E -C, um, laws are, are, are handled civilly. But... You know, it matters whether the president follows the law. Jim, do you see it the same way that this, that that Giuliani was essentially saying it, this does have something to do with the election? No, I, th I think what Giul Giuliani was saying is that it had the impact that it may have had some impact on the election. I, I, I still believe that there's not an FEC violation here. And, and just because someone does something and has an impact on the campaign, if that's not a coordinated effort, that's not a campaign activity. And, and so it's just it's not as easy as you as you say, Jeffrey. But it's it was not. not Nothing is easy about but, but, this whole situation, but, but is mean, it a violation? Yes. I but think so. I mean, wouldn't this be, uh, regardless, a coordinated effort? I mean, there was coordination of uh, getting the payments made. There was coordination uh, of, you know, sending things to the Trump organization yeah. for Michael Cohen. Well, that's an important question. And one of the things that we didn't get from this 24 hour news cycle was we still don't have clarity on what the president knew and when, when the president knew it, which is a very important piece of this puzzle. My colleagues at the journal have reported that Michael Cohen missed two deadlines to pay Stormy Daniels because he couldn't get a hold of Trump in that home stretch of the campaign. So the fact that the payment was ultimately made raises questions of whether or not he got a hold of Trump, had permission, Trump was in on it. And I think the Wall Street um, Journal had also reported that Michael Cohen had complained that President Trump hadn't yes, paid him back yet. that too. And I believe that was after the election. But regardless, you're still supposed to file 
a campaign finance disclosure if you make a donation to your own campaign after the election. So today Sarah Huckabee Sanders was put in an odd spot because she was asked if Trump uh, basically filed a fraudulent filing and she said, I don't know. She had no answer for it. Van, I mean, it just, uh, you know, on, on the smell test, the, the idea that Michael Cohen has this portfolio of this kind of situation that he has free reign to deal with and access to, I guess in this case, he didn't Ran, have access to money, cash. But, but a retainer from the president mm -hmm. in order to just deal this, with the this stuff, and he doesn't even have to tell his client what he's dealing with or if it's been resolved. I mean, think of, if that is true, think about how terrible that is. <laughs> I am such a bad person that I just have a big bucket of cash and somebody to go hand it out to get me out of trouble. And that's, I think that's normal. Now before, I mean, it's probably illegal, but if it's not, it's still terrible. Also, I, I remember when Rudy Giuliani was a force to be reckoned with. I mean, this guy was bad. I mean, he was a prosecutor. He put the mob away. He took on you know, New York, turned it around. He's wandering all over the stage, stepping on rakes, and doesn't even know it. And so if this is the guy that's going to save Donald Trump, uh, I think Donald Trump is in trouble. Scott, does, has he been doing harm for his client? <clears throat> well, I'm not a lawyer, so I think we can have the lawyers debate what, uh, what the legal implications of this are. The PR strategy, I think... Uh, is questionable. I'm not sure I would send him out there like this, particularly before the best lawyer actually starts work, and that's Emmett Flood. They've hired Emmett Flood this week, who is a real pro when it comes to investigations and dealing with White House that's under investigation. So my advice would be let Emmett get to the office <laughs> and let him take <laughs> over and let him start to dictate the strategy. This is the guy that ought to be calling the shots. And I, you know, I, I, some of this is not legal. Some of this is geared towards the future because whether the president ever gets indicted, I think, is actually really questionable. But if the Democrats take the House, he's probably going to face impeachment. So there's a public opinion component, and that's, I think, what they're trying to manage. Maria, as a Democrat, I'm guessing your advice would be keep sending Rudy Giuliani out <laughs> uh, as often as Let's possible. Let's put him on the news 24-7, because I agree with Van. He seemed to bring back the stories when he was on the campaign trail. People started wondering whether he was okay because he was so unhinged and because he was being so erratic and saying things that were so bizarre. Last night was that Rudy Giuliani as opposed to the Rudy Giuliani, who was the subject of the, of the book Emperor of the City and who really commanded a lot of respect. I think he's lost a lot of that. But to the point about whether he's going to follow legal strategy, he seems to be the Trump of the legal team, <laughs> which is very dangerous for the legal team. Um, and so who knows how Emmett's going to handle this and whether he's even going to stay, given what just happened the last 24 hours. But I do want to make a comment about Sarah Huckabee Sanders. As somebody who has been a press secretary for three cabinet secretaries under the Clinton administration, I almost feel her pain, mm. even though she knew what she was getting into when she took this job. But I will say that if I were her, I would quit. Why? Because what Trump did last night, let's put aside his disdain for the American people every time he lies to them, which is almost every single day, if not more. Um, the disdain and the disrespect that he showed, not just his legal team, but his communications team, the person that goes out every single day to represent him, to represent the American people and the government of the United States at that podium, and then put her in a situation where she had to say, after she has already been seen as somebody who lies to the press, now she is seen as somebody who's completely out of the loop. Her credibility has been irrefragably ruined, I believe. I think there needed to be, from the beginning, an outside legal spokesman to handle these issues. They shouldn't have been handled from the podium to begin with in the White House press room. I feel and like early on they said, we're going to be referring all you know, mm -hmm. legal stuff to this outside, and that just never happened. Yeah, I, I think that would have been a big help, and I think that's part of the strategy. I think that was Rudy Giuliani's well, I, I think that's part of the strategy <laughs> with Rudy Giuliani. I'm not sure it's happening as effectively as they want it to. Right. But, but, and part of that is getting Emmett Flood in there. I mean, he's a real lawyer with real credentials, worked in the Bush administration, they handled impeachment proceedings. He knows what he's doing, and he's going to be able to coordinate this effort in a systematic and... and a methodical way to, to get it to a conclusion. I, I just want to point out that two months ago, I think it was March 10th, when Maggie Haberman reported mm. that the president was talking to Emmett Flood about hiring him for the legal team, 
The president went after Maggie Haberman, saying not only <laughs> disparaging her in general, but saying that this is absolutely fake news. This is not true. I'm very satisfied with John Dowd, Jay Sekulow, and, and Ty Cobb. Ty Cobb. Ty Cobb. Two, of Two of them, them are, are gone. gone. Right. Yes. Right. I, so. That's definitely a problem for this White House, because I think the more Trump says fake news, the more he says there was no stormy affair, the more he says there was no collusion, and the more that you get the more that he's proven wrong. His words have caught up with him. A lot of legal experts say there are parallels here to the Russian investigation. I, I, I just want to play what he said on, on Hannity last night, sort of the, the critical thing. This was uh, on Hannity last night, and there was this morning that he talked about the timing of this. But let's, what, let's watch what he said to Hannity. Uh, that money was not campaign money. Sorry, I'm giving you a fact now that you don't know. It's not campaign money. No campaign finance violation. So, so they, they funneled it through the law firm, funneled through the law firm, and the president repaid it. Oh, I didn't know he did. Yeah, there's no campaign finance law. Zero. So the president, just like every Sean. So what, this decision Sean, was made by everybody. Everybody was nervous about this from the very beginning. I wasn't. I knew how much money Donald Trump put into that campaign. I said 130,000. He's going to do a couple of checks for 130000 When I heard uh, Cohen's uh, retainer of 35000 when he was doing no work for the president, mm. I said, but that's how he's repaying. That's how, he, how's he, how he's repaying it, with a little profit and a little margin for paying taxes for Michael. The Look, president, but do you know the president didn't know about this? Uh, I believe I, that's what He didn't Michael know about said. the specifics of it, as far as I know. But he did know about the general arrangement that Michael would take care of things like this. Who are these people? Yeah. I, I mean, he, he's saying, well, you see, he gave him, the, he wasn't doing any work, but he's giving him $35,000 a month. Like, what? It's Who does that? I mean, I, I, I mean, I'm not Look, in private I, I practice, but I know something about lawyers. I have that's to. not how that, that's not what people do. But isn't that a, cle a sly way of reimbursing somebody for a payoff without yeah, actually yeah, if you're in the mafia. Them? Look, I'm, I'm sure Michael Cohen sure was doing that's a lot not more not how, than just paying off folks as it relates well, to these issues. The president said he was yeah, only president, doing right. a, a tiny and, and, amount of legal work for him. In addition to that, we still did. And I wouldn't sing Sarah's demise all that soon. Um, she, <laughs> you know, and, and I, I wouldn't. And, and the reason for that is we don't know what the president knew, when the president knew it, wh as it related to the payments and when the payments were made. We don't know but, any but of those But Giuliani says he only knew about it 10 days right. ago. Right. which. I mean, we know he watches television. So every day. you're telling me that when this whole story broke, when Stormy Daniels did this interview with me on 60 Minutes, and the president watched it, that he never picked up the phone when this lawsuit was filed against him, <laughs> that he never picked up the phone to at least say, "Hey, what are we doing? Did, did I know What's about this? Did I pay her? I mean, that he just don't, don't, I pay he, her? he waited until 10 days ago. Yeah. I mean, does that? Does it, anyone believe we, we haven't heard from the White House or, or the president on that yet, and I think we have to. Yes, wait we and have. But the oh, we just heard about it. He said, he said in Air Force One, I don't know anything right. about well, this. Well, we know that's a lie. Well, that's, well, right? that's the question, today. right? The way that Rudy Giuliani just laid this out looks to me as if they went back and say, okay, what story can we make up with the facts that are here? The facts that we're paying uh, Cohen $35,000 a month for a retainer, he's not doing much. Let's figure out what we can say to fit this but square peg into this round the hole. The key event, I think, was the search of Michael Cohn's mm -hmm. office. Yeah. Because that was the signal 